Hello, uh, Mr. Justin Trudeau, our Prime Minister of Canada. Um, my name is Tara. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, and uh, I'm the autistic lady that just uh, contacted you on your um, page on your on the government website for making letters. Uh, I just want to put something in my understanding and perspective in concerns of how our government has been and where I think it shouldn't be in concerns to people with disabilities. I have autism and ADHD plus social anxiety disorder. I'm 45 years old. For the last 10 years I've been denied work because everyone here in Edmonton, uh, heck Alberta, uh, think that people with disabilities are nothing more than a liability. Now this is all before COVID. Not only did he go after uh, persons with developmental disabilities uh, programs, which help people like me go into um, get resources or workers or whatever need that they might need for their disability. On top of that, one has to be below 70 IQ in order to get what they need, in order to get on PDD. So despite their um, disability, also that they only look at the IQ test that they give you despite your disability and the rigorous tests that you might have to go through in order to get onto it. The other part of it is is that people, I mean last year um, or a few years ago uh, when Notley was in power here in Alberta, which was the NDP, she basically um, made people's lives who uh, relied on services, uh, social services or programs similar to that which here, I don't know, I think it's ODSP is what you guys uh, get in Ontario, but here in Alberta, we call it H. Um, a shared uh, income for the severely disabled. Well, many of those that are on H are just like me, where they might have mo moderate to mild uh, disabilities. Quite capable of working, but no program fits the profile, and a lot of us fall through the cracks. So, and a lot of our programs are made primarily more for the uh, severely disabled or the more seen aspect of disability. So, people like me get denied age and they get denied a lot of things. And then there's the biggest uh, hoopla of all. Um, just this past November, he, uh, Kenny, basically um, de indexed age. So, a lot of people are um, struggling just to pay their rent, pay their bills, um, can hardly even afford food, never mind to f feed their children. Then on top of that, um, people uh, in general, once COVID hit, ended up being left to fend for themselves basically. So not only are people surviving off of less than 1400 a month when age used to be 1700 for most and that was for one single adult now people are surviving off of 1400 or less and if you're not a parent that's all you get so not only is our rent uh, the better part of whatever age gives us so average rent here in Alberta can run you between 950 for a slum or 1500 if you're rich and that's for your average two bedroom and frankly I think this is unconscionable I mean like how can a government do this to its adult population that happens to be vulnerable then on top of that um, a lot of seniors live off of less than what age is as a matter of fact I have a senior friend that lives off of less than 1200 a month yet her rent is much like anyone else's but she's in low-income seniors she doesn't get a subsidy like many people with disabilities and if you are on a subsidy for low income that was scaled back so that if there the building needs any maintenance it doesn't get done because there isn't enough to go around um, a lot of my friends who are on in these buildings for low-income housing they live in squalor which means that a lot of them have bed bug issues, mouse issues, um, cockroach issues. I mean, it's horrendous what these people have to live through. Then on top of that, 
a lot of provinces, if you are on uh, the assistance program, they don't take dollar for dollar if you have a husband or significant other that works. Why does Alberta do it, other than the fact that they're greedy? A lot of provinces, BC especially, uh, they don't take from you. They allow you to keep whatever you earn plus. Um, I'm on CPPD. I can't get a job. If my husband should die or pass away tomorrow, yes, I might get his pension. But what does Alberta do in that process? Because I might get his pension. Yes, I could be on age if I was single, but again, they would take dollar for dollar as they did when I first got on it, when I started working. When I got married, I lost everything. I lost my age, I lost my health when it came to that and basically said, you're married now, you're now your husband's um, problem. So what happens if he gets COVID and dies? Where does that put me, homeless? Because I couldn't bank my way out of a maze. But yet, just because I look like everyone else, that it uh, everyone thinks that I should be able to do what everyone else does. No, I'm sorry, my brain doesn't work that way. As a matter of fact, I am diagnosed at about 16 years old. But again, government doesn't see that because they don't understand. The problem that I see is that a lot of people are gonna die or commit suicide because of COVID and not being able to feed themselves or their children. There's already people screaming for help in my community which is primarily made of people with major health conditions like fibromyalgia or that are seniors or people just like me that live on age who cannot get enough food to live on during COVID because they can't afford it. The food banks are turning people away. And if you're not a church member of any church, the church is turning you away. So where does that leave you? Death? Starvation? Or death by starvation? Or hope? But hope doesn't feed the belly. When we introduce um, certain monies to whole populations, but forget the vulnerable sections, we forget about humanity. We forget about those people. Yes, they get money, but they're not there by choice. People that are born like I am, they don't have a choice as to the cards that are given. All they can do is live it. And unfortunately, most of us have a hard time living it because our public sectors think that it's okay to throw money at us and barely give enough for one to live on instead of adopting programs or resources that could better people's lives. Yes, I know this sounds expensive, but when you have person-centered programs like I used to come from, my life was 10 times better. Not only was I able to get a job for 10 years, I worked as a security guard and as well as worked in nursing homes before you needed a piece of paper. Now I can't even find a job because they call me what they call me. Funny, you don't look autistic. Funny, you don't look disabled. Well, just because I walk and talk doesn't mean I don't have issues. Fact is, I'm also one of the COVID people that could get very sick because I also have asthma. I get COVID, I'm dead, okay? But that's the reality. So again, a lot of people that have disabilities do work. Why aren't they getting that um, subsidy? But yet, hey, it's okay. Let them starve. When they are gone, well, that money could be used for something else. Yeah, unfortunately, we may be only what government may seem as a drain on resources. But sometimes, when we have a social government that protects all people, all nationalities, even kids, because one day those kids are going to grow up. They're going to be where I'm at if they have a disability or they can't get a job. You might get an education, but how do you get the job when you're called a liability, despite the education you might have? 
You may not know what it's like to be poor, but I do, because I'm already there. I'm about middle class because of my husband's earnings. Yeah, that's what I survive on next to the CPPD. I used to have age, but I got married. I fell in love. So dollar for dollar, there you go. You're on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get the picture. A lot of people that are on age can't or should not work because of illness and or disability so severe that if they were to take on a job with a mental issue, such as schizophrenia, which one would they pay for first? Would their mental status change? I think so. Would their health change? Oh, definitely. But this COVID is also going to change people. If they're healthy now, they won't be in a few months or in a few weeks. I have it very lucky where I have the ability to get the very food I need to live. Many don't. There was a time that I was in their shoes where I could barely survive month to month, never mind wondering where I was going to eat or how I was going to eat, what I was going to eat. Many times I had to live off of Chef Boyardee or noodle soup or macaroni and cheese. I hate this stuff, frankly, now because I had so much of it. Sometimes that's all you can afford as a parent on those resources. I hate to say this, that's all kids eat is that garbage food because mommies and daddies can't afford anything else for their little ones. That's all single adults have get because that's all they can eat because that's all they can afford. When you can buy a can for 45 cents or a dollar or two at a dollar store, whereas the average food, average people, if I was single, about 150 would do me a month, easy. And that's including all my vegetables. But even then, my vegetables are run out before the end. So I would survive off of frozen food or as in frozen vegetables or canned vegetables. And even then, I would still have to go to the food bank. And the food banks here don't hand out meat unless we are a family. Or it goes to the homeless shelters or the other shelters for which make the dinners often for the homeless. Furthermore, here in Alberta, we have chosen the Northlands as a communal place for all the homeless to be housed during COVID. One person gets sick with COVID in that place and it'll run rampant. Where will Alberta be then? Many of those that are homeless have disabilities, either like mine or much worse. And even though that some people may not consider them people, there was a time that they could have been a part of our society, but the cards did not deal a good enough hand, hence why they might be where they are. Many of these people might come from abuse. Many of these people might come from other situations. They say that uh, many who work are just one step away from being homeless. But yet, the government doesn't see this or understand that. Not everything has to do with finance or money. Because behind that, all that money that we all talk about when it comes to mathematics and governing systems, there's the human component. And all too often the government forgets the human component behind that money. I am more than just a number. I am a human who is worried for her friends, her family, and herself. Just as of recently, our government pushed in a bill that scares me to no end. The bill basically states that during COVID, they can enact any law or push any law through without so much as a blink or a vote. Nobody has a say. It's bad enough we're forced into COVID jail because nobody wants this. Nobody wants to die. I sure as hell don't. But when it comes to disinfecting things, I'm scared that one of our laws that were just pushed through last week basically states that 
they can go into anyone's home without warning, without asking. For someone like me, whose home is the last place that they feel safe in during this pandemic, and if my home isn't safe, if my home isn't secure, what's that gonna do to me if some person comes into my home willy-nilly, does whatever, I don't have kids to worry about, but I do have two cats and a husband. Both of us have asthma. Any form of chemical that is used in my home cannot be ha with bleach or ammonia based because bleach and ammonia kills animals. I love my two cats. I love my husband. For both me and my husband who both have asthma, bleach puts us both into an asthma asthmatic issue for which is very hard to control at the best of times. Today's a good day. You're not gonna see me coughing and hacking. But when spring rolls around, I'm coughing and hacking. Every might, one might think I have COVID when it's just asthma. Or they might think I have a cold when it's just asthma. That's what I'm scared of. I'm scared of coughing out in the middle of public and getting charged by a cop for not self-isolating just because I went and got food. <laughs> That's right. It's spring, guess what's gonna happen? I'm allergic to mold. I cough once. <laughs> I'm scared. Many of those that have disabilities have issues just like mine, if not worse. These are the communities we have to help. We need to help. I'm not saying help me. I'm saying help the disability communities all over Canada. Help the senior communities all over Canada because they're being left behind. Unless that's what you want is for them to die. Because that's all I'm seeing right now. I don't want my friends to die. I don't want my family to die. At 45 years old, I still have a grandmother. I don't want her to die. I have a husband. I don't want to be alone. Many of us have husbands or wives, children, in the disability community. Please don't ignore them. They're people too. They deserve as much as anyone else. And just because you're well off doesn't make you any less human or and it doesn't make us any less human. We just have to have a heart and understand that being poor has a price, especially during COVID. Thank you. By the way, I hope that this gets to you. I hope that you take it seriously because we're scared here. And I'm the first one that will say that. I hope that you contact me as soon as you can, because I'm open to doing Skype. I'm open to doing Facebook video chats. I'm open to talking online. If I can do this video and be scared, the least thing you can do is treat me like I'm a human and talk to me. Thank you.